Of all the specialized officers in the military, there are few more fascinating and mysterious than the sniper. The image of a lone soldier perched above the action, picking off enemies one by one with their precise shots is iconic. These expert marksmen are specially trained to be effective and deadly while hiding out of the enemy's sight, sometimes literally miles away. They're highly disciplined and incredibly dangerous, and an exceptional sniper can make all the difference in a military conflict. This video is all about 10 of the most impressive, famous, and lethal snipers in military history. From record-breaking kill counts to incredible marksmanship, get ready to learn all about the top 10 best snipers in the history of mankind. Is your country on the list? Stay tuned and find out. Number 10. Zhang Taofeng, the Lethal Learner Zhang Taofeng was a Chinese sniper who fought in the Korean War. Despite not using a magnifying scope, binoculars, or any other equipment that would allow him to spot targets from far away, he made approximately 214 confirmed kills in just 32 days of combat. It's also been suggested that he made those confirmed kills with only 442 bullets, working out to around 2 bullets a kill. If you don't understand why that's so impressive, just know that reports estimate that around 250,000 rounds were fired per dead insurgent in the modern Iraq and Afghanistan wars. Taofeng was able to achieve this surgical sniping success by analyzing his early failures and rigorously improving upon them. When he first attempted to fire on an enemy, he fired 12 shots and missed all of them. He was almost killed in the ensuing enemy fire. This terrifying near-death experience led him to analyze why he failed and develop a new shooting technique using the iron sights of his trusty service rifle. After this, he was able to refine his shooting and achieve the impressive kill count that was later reported. It also gives us a heartwarming message about staying humble and learning from your mistakes. Next, we move from the frozen kills of North Korea to the jungles of Vietnam. Number 9. Adelbert Waldron, The Terror of Vietnam Adelbert Waldron was a United States sniper during the Vietnam War and is regarded as the most accomplished American sniper during that time. After a successful stint in the U.S. Navy, Waldron joined the Army in 1968 as a sergeant. That same year, he was placed with the 9th Infantry Division in South Vietnam. Known as an expert marksman, he was selected to study with the 9th Infantry Sniper School, where he honed his skills. As a sniper, he worked in the Mekong Delta in the Brownwater Tango Boats and PBRs, operating alongside the Navy. He was credited by U.S. General Ewell with a confirmed kill achieved in a single shot from 900 yards away on a moving tango boat. In the first half of 1969, he achieved a kill count of 109 confirmed kills, which made him the deadliest sniper in United States military history until 2011. Waldron ended his time in Vietnam with a Silver Star, a Bronze Star, a Presidential Unit Citation, and two Distinguished Service Crosses. He then taught at the U.S. Army Marksmanship Unit as a senior instructor until 1970. Now it's time to head for the land down under. Number 8. William Billy Singh, the Queensland Sharpshooter Billy Singh began his life as a farm boy from rural Queensland, Australia, but he eventually became one of the most respected snipers of World War I. Singh was a great shot from a young age, and his brother-in-law once said that he could shoot the tail off a piglet as far away as 25 paces. Singh became a competitive target shooter for a time before World War I broke out, and he enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force. He was stationed in the Gallipoli Peninsula of what is now Turkey and quickly developed a reputation as a deadly sniper. His estimated kill count of 200 men earned him the nickname the Assassin, the Murderer, and the Angel of Death. The Turkish army brought in an equally notorious sniper, Abdul the Terrible, to face off against Singh in hopes that they could put a stop to the devastating blows to their army. However, before Abdul could fire a single bullet at him, Singh caught him in his sights and killed him. Shooting your competition in the head is definitely one way to defend your title. Now we head to the snowy fields of World War II. Number 7. Matthäus Herzenauer, the Wehrmacht Wunderkind Matthäus Herzenauer was a German sniper on the Eastern Front in World War II from 1943 to 1945. Though he was just 20 years old when he started, he was incredibly successful in the art of long-range death and killed 345 men before he was captured. Through hunting, he learned the skills of marksmanship and camouflage from a young age. At age 17, he was drafted into the German army. He was sent to the Eastern Front to face off against the Soviet soldiers there, and this is where he began to earn his reputation as a terrifying sniper. Mateus was a patient man, often sitting in the snow for hours before firing even a single shot. He made all of his 345 kills over the course of 10 months and once made a kill from 1,200 yards away. 
for context, that's the length of over 10 football fields. He was captured by Soviet forces in 1945, but before his capture, he certainly made his mark on military history. Now we move to a country best known for its friendliness, but with a deadly military history. Number 6. Francis Pegamagabo, the Canadian Crackshot Francis Pegamagabo was an Ojibwa man, born on the Perry Island Indian Reserve, now known as the Wasak Singh First Nation, who would go on to become one of the deadliest snipers of World War I. Like many of the snipers on this list, he grew up learning how to hunt, and this made him an excellent shot before he even dreamed of going up against targets who shot back. When war was declared in Europe, Pegamagabo enlisted in the Canadian Expeditionary Force at the age of 25. Francis worked as a scout and a sniper, two of the most dangerous jobs in this bloody and arduous war, but he proved himself as a sniper with a combination of patience and nearly perfect aim, and made 378 confirmed kills during his time in combat. After he was discharged in 1919, he became the most decorated First Nation soldier in Canadian history. After leaving the military, he advocated for indigenous rights until his death in 1952. Now it's back to World War II, where it's time for the Red Army to strike back. Number 5. Fyodor Oklopkov, the Soviet Sniping Savant Fyodor Oklopkov was a member of the Red Army and a professional Soviet sniper during World War II. He joined the army in 1941 as a machine gunner. Then in 1942, he found his true military calling as a sniper. Fyodor fought with the Soviet Mosin Nagant 1891-30 sniper rifle with a PU scope, a rifle he proved himself to have a terrifying level of expertise with. How terrifying, you ask? Well, his reported kill count is 429, and he was decorated as a hero of the Soviet Union on the 20th anniversary of the war's end. He also received the Order of Lenin, Order of the Red Banner, Order of the Patriotic War, Order of the Red Star, Medal for Merit in Combat, and Victory over Germany Medal. He was lucky that sniping was a largely stationary role, or the sheer weight of all his medals would probably have held him back. World War II bred many deadly Soviet snipers, and our next one is a world-renowned legend. Number 4. Vasily Zayatsev, Stalingrad's Super Sniper Vasily Zayatsev was a soldier of the Red Army during World War II and a prominent figure at the Battle of Stalingrad. He received his first rifle at age 12 as a gift and was trained in hunting by his grandfather. While he worked as a chief of finance in the Pacific Fleet for several years, he applied five times to be moved to the front lines. His request was finally granted and he was sent to the 284th Rifle Division. He became a sniper after proving his skills as a soldier, hitting an enemy that was 800 feet away. As a sniper, he was prone to hide in many different locations, from water pipes to underneath rubble. Every few kills, he would change position in order to avoid detection. During the Battle of Stalingrad, he killed more than 300 Nazi soldiers. In his memoirs, Zayatsev wrote about facing off against a Nazi sniper known as the Super Sniper, who he supposedly killed during the Battle of Stalingrad. The story of this conflict inspired the film Enemy at the Gates, although many believe that the account of his duel with a German sniper was nothing but propaganda and it was never proven. He received many awards for his time in battle, including the Order of the Red Banner, Order of the Patriotic War, Medal for the Defense of Stalingrad, and Medal for the Victory over Germany. Once more to the killing fields of World War II's Eastern Front and another hero of the Soviet Union. Number 3. Lyudmila Pavlichenko, Lady Death Lyudmila Pavlichenko is regarded as the deadliest female sniper in recorded history. She fought for the Red Army against the Germans during World War II and earned a massive, deadly reputation among the German army, who referred to her as Lady Death. As a young girl, she once heard a boy bragging about his shooting achievements and, she wrote, that was enough to send me running to the range. After she began shooting, she developed a love of it and joined a shooting club, earning a sharpshooter badge and a marksman certificate. She advanced her education by enrolling in a sniper school. When Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa in 1941, Pavlichenko enlisted in the Red Army, despite insistence from the recruitment officer that she become a nurse instead. She joined the 25th Rifle Division as a sniper, taking out 36 German snipers. On a publicity tour in Chicago meant to drum up support for the US joining the war, she addressed the men in the audience by saying, Gentlemen, I am 25 years old and I have killed 309 fascist occupants by now. Don't you think, gentlemen, that you have been hiding behind my back for too long? She earned this kill count in only a few months and is not only one of the greatest female snipers of all time, but one of the greatest snipers of all time, period. Next is a controversial American figure. Number 2. Chris Kyle, the real American sniper. Chris Kyle was a Navy SEAL who served four tours during the Iraq War over the course of 10 years. 
During his time in Iraq, he became regarded as the most lethal sniper in American military history. He had 160 confirmed kills according to the Department of Defense and wrote about his experiences in a memoir, American Sniper, which was later adapted to a feature film starring Bradley Cooper in the role of Kyle. This kill count broke the record for most kills by an American sniper, previously held by Adelbert Waldron mentioned earlier in the list. In his own words, Kyle described his time as a sniper like this, I don't have to psych myself up or do something special mentally. I look through the scope, get my target in the crosshairs, and kill my enemy before he kills one of my people. He was given two awards of the Silver Star and five awards of the Bronze Star. There has, however, been some debate surrounding his military record, including claims that his kill count has not been officially substantiated. Regardless, Kyle left his mark on American military history before his murder in 2013, and will likely be remembered for a very long time. Now it's time to discover who our top sniper of all time is. Number 1. Simo Hayoha, The White Death Simo Hayoha is regarded as one of the deadliest snipers in all of history, and perhaps the deadliest sniper who has ever lived. During the Winter War of 1939-1940, where Finland battled against the Soviet Union, Hayoha had at least 505 confirmed kills. This is more confirmed kills than any sniper on record. Hayoha was only 5 feet tall and not considered to be an especially intimidating man in day-to-day -day life. It is likely this ability to be unnoticed and underestimated is part of what made him such an effective sniper. Hayoha was an excellent shot, a skill he developed by hunting as a young man. Additionally, his father had trained him to precisely estimate distances, a vital skill for a sniper. The war lasted for 105 days and Hayoha fought for 98 of them, leaving combat only when he became injured. While he was active in combat, he made a massive mark on the Soviet army. Unlike the rest of the Finnish soldiers, he wore all-white camouflage. However, he took his camouflage an extra mile and would surround himself with snowdrifts that provided extra cover as well as cushion for his rifle. He was meticulous about his preparations and would visit his favorite firing positions during the night to keep himself sharp. His ability to pick off Soviet soldiers while remaining unseen and undetected earned him the nickname the White Death. Though he was injured during the war, he survived and returned to his farm to retire after the fighting was done. He finally passed away in 2002 at the ripe old age of 96. Check out Surviving Actual Military Combat True Story and Top 10 Most Powerful Militaries Military Army Comparison.